How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over how to replace the head gasket on this 2010 Prius. In the previous video I had already went over how to remove the cowl when I was showing you how to check for uh, head gasket leak. So first you want to disconnect the 12 volt battery and the hybrid battery just to be safe and then after that we'll start taking the harness off and the intake and then the valve cover and then we'll start working on the front cover. We're going to have to go underneath to get the harness for the crank sensor and the AF sensor in the back. We'll have to go underneath to get that. So now I'm just going to take off the intake by taking these 12s out and then this EGR crossover pipe. Now that we got the intake off, we'll go down below and drain the coolant and then we can get the wire harness on that side and then we can start pulling the valve cover, then we can pull the EGR system, the exhaust, and then the front cover. Well, I like to take the exhaust off, like at that bracket right there, right where it meets at the flange. And then that bolt, and that bolt up there, and I'll take the manifold off with the head. Now that the coolant's drained, we got the exhaust flange unbolted. We can take the tire off and then that inner shield, and then we can start working on taking the valve cover and the front cover off. So now I'm gonna pull the thermostat housing by the 210 nuts and then there's one bolt on the back side. And that way if there's any coolant in here, it'll drain all that out. So I'm not, when I take the cooler lines off the EGR cooler, uh, there will be no more coolant that drips down on that side onto the ground. Cause I have my catch pan down underneath the engine right there.
now that we got all the coolant lines that go to the cooler pipe and the electrical connectors all undone and this big lower radiator hose all that undone now we can move over get it set to top dead center and then pull the front cover so your timing marks one is right there another one is on this cam it's the line that goes back over further like almost under the chain and then to line it up this one here is just going right in this valley right here that's where you line that up and then this mark lines up right here with the top of this cam cap and then down on the crank you just put that line at the zero if you get that then your timing's good now you can pull crank pulley off and then the motor mount and then the front cover now with the crank pulley off we'll use a jack with a piece of wood go right up underneath the oil pan and jack this up so we can get the motor mount off and then we can pull the front cover Now that the motor mounts out on the back side, back right here where this harness connector is, there's two 10 mil nuts. You'll pull that, that's your tensioner for your chain, so make sure you're at top dead center. And then you can pull that, and then we'll come down here to the bottom and pull the, the filter housing by the four 14s. And then we'll take the 12s and 14s out of the cover and we can pull the cover off. So while taking the front cover bolts out, you need to take, at least take this bolt for the water pump and the one directly below it, because those go through into the block. So you need to take those two out, or you can take all of them out and just take the water pump out. Uh, I like to just take those two out and then pull it out, the water pump with the front cover. Now we're gonna pull this cam tower off. Well, the chain, then the cam tower, and then the cylinder head. And then when you pull this chain, these cams might kick a little. Uh, and right there on that cam, you can put a wrench to relieve a little tension on the chain to pull it off. If the cams kick a little bit, it's we'll be fine. We can just, when we go back together, we can just rotate it and then put the chain back on its timing marks. And then how I remove this cam tower, I actually leave, you can remove the top half and then the bottom half. Uh, I kind of remove it with the cam still in the cam tower by removing the 12s and just leaving all the 10s. And then that way they just come out together.
So in removing this cam tower assembly, you're looking for any of the lobes that are pushing down. Kind of hard to tell on camera. But this one's pointing like out that way so it's not compressing on the spring. This one's pointing down this way so it's starting to press. This one's also pointing down. So what you want to do, this one's pointing down, is start relieving the ones that are have no tension on it and then slowly work your way onto the ones that have tension. And if you're on top dead center, none of them will have like tons of pressure. And then to slowly work the 12s out and then we can pull the cam tower. And if you're leaving the EGR on like I am to pull the head, you'll have to take this 12 nut and then this stud out because that goes through here to the cam tower and then we can slide that out. Okay, now at this point you're gonna to wanna to pull the rockers off. Um, you also pull the little cap off the top of the valve, something like that. And then you wanna pull the hydraulic lifter. So you pull those things out and try to keep those organized for each one. However, you can do that. If you do get them mixed up, it's not horrible, but it's best to try to put everything back the way that you removed it. Now with all the rockers and lifters out of the way, we can remove all the head bolts. We're gonna do a reverse. Instead of going from the inside out, we're gonna go from the outside in. So start there and then cross over here, then to there and then back. And then just work your way in and then you should end on these two center ones. And you're gonna use an, a 12. This is kind of a special socket. And that's what we use to get the head bolts out. Now with all the head bolts out, we should be able to lift off the head. Uh, I like to usually just grab around this EGR and then on like the back side over here, just work it back and forth and then pull the head off. And so that's how you remove the head. And you can pull the gasket off. This was the cylinder it was leaking into.
pretty sure it's right here you can see all the silver on this one coming across and this has still got all the black I think that's where I'll do some more looking I think that's where it was coming in at